things were included in the policy that RIHF. I just want to say that um, I feel that residents are a little excluded from this uh, presentation. There's a lot of jargon and acronyms being used that I don't think that everyone you know really understands, and I really understand some of them. Uh, but uh, so the city's consolidated plan says that there are 21,000 families in the city of Richmond that are extremely low income. And the, the Public Housing Authority is basically one of the only service providers, one of the only housing providers that provides housing that is affordable to them. And uh, the city's consolidated plan also says that the extremely low income people, and I said this last night at the board meeting, quote, will be at imminent risk of homelessness if they do not have mainstream public benefits. Mm -hmm. and that is a public benefit like public housing. That means that if we are reducing public housing, that there are 21,000 people in the city that are subject to homelessness without public housing. And also last night at the board meeting, RHA said that they humanely refer folks that they evict to the Greater Richmond Continuum of Care for homelessness and have them call the crisis line. And if you pay attention to the news, you know that someone in Richmond died on the streets outside of a homeless shelter that was shut down by the Greater Richmond Continuum of Care last week. Um, mm -hmm. So you, what is that saying that we're doing for residents? We're gonna subject them to death by closing down public housing, by reducing the affordability. And I wanna also say that uh, I read this cooperative agreement that RHA has signed with the city of Richmond for, regarding Craig Court's redevelopment. And it says, quote, the house, the, the authority shall ensure that no more than 25% of the units in each phase of the rede redevelopment project shall be made affordable to households earning X or below 30% of the area median income. That would mean that there would only be 183 households that make public housing rent, uh, I'm sorry, incomes that would be allowed back in Creighton. Right. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. It's right there in black and white. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can we can try to dance around it. Yeah. And as far as one-for-one -one replacement, it's not something that advocates say. This is what HUD defines in the federal regulations, 24, Title 24 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 42.375, one-for-one -one replacement of lower-income dwelling units. This means that all occupied and vacant occupied or lower income dwelling units that are demolished should be replaced. That means that all of the units that RHA left vacant for two years over in Creighton Court, that they would be uh, replaced. It also means that the units must be sufficient in number and size to house no fewer than the number of occupants who could have been housed there originally. It also means that the units must be in standard condition and they must be in comparable affordability. So this is not something that advocates are making up or something that just people are advocating for. This is actual HUD terminology, sir. Mm -hmm. You can look this up, sir. It's not just something that we're saying. Mm -hmm. Listen to the residents. We need income, we need affordability for incomes that are extremely low income. The city's consolidated plan says that the average income of a public housing resident is under $11,000 a year. That is the average income. That is well below 30% of the area median income. Yes. We need affordability at that level, and we need to make our plans uh, accommodate that. Thank mm -hmm. you. And accountability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and accountability. yeah, yeah. yeah. Accountability.